Welcome. My name is Tom Seip, and it's my honor to be this year's chair of the Chesapeake Bay Maritime Museum Board of Governors. I'd like to welcome all of you. What a fabulous day for Oyster Fest. I hope you all had uh, plenty of oysters and plenty of beer. I'd like to uh, also welcome all of our members, the Parks family over here. Thank you so much for coming. How about a round of applause for the Parks family? Of course, our staff, our volunteers, and our donors who funded the restoration of Rosie Parks. So, we have a lot of speakers today. I'm going to do my part to be as brief as I possibly can. I was standing not on the podium, but right down here at this same event in 2010. That was a long time ago, three short years, but an eternity. Let me set the context for you a little bit. Rosie was in, was on the other side of the boathouse, um, nearly a ruin, and that's being charitable. We had just come through the meltdown, the financial meltdown of 2008 and 2009. Today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is 15,600 or thereabouts. Three years ago, on this day, the Dow was 11,100. The museum had just gone through staff reductions. We'd recruited a new executive director. Times were tough. Money was short. At that time, the chairman of the museum was Joe Peters. And Joe said to the board, we're a museum. This vessel was entrusted to us by her original owner, and we need to restore her. That's what maritime museums do. It took a great deal of courage, a great deal of courage and leadership to get the board to commit to her restoration and raising the funds for it. Happily, Joe's here today, along with Mary Lou, who is somewhere. Where are you, Mary Lou? So, I'd like both of you to come up to the podium, please. We have a little something for you. So you got to hold that up. Where's Mary Lou? He's right come here. on. You get a chance to take a picture of it. So, Joe, without your leadership, without your leadership and Mary Lou, your unceasing and support, there would be no Rose Park sitting over here today. So, thank you on behalf of the museum. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Don't don't trip. Watch your stuff. I'm watch my stuff here, and you'll have. Well, I promise to be brief, and I try to live up to my promises. So um, enough for me. I want to introduce the museum's chief curator, Pete Lesher, to talk more about the boat, her restoration process, and acknowledge some more people who were very important in her restoration. Pete. Thank you, Tom, and thank you all very much for being here today. Uh, all of you, the Parks family, our members, our friends, even if you're, if you're here for the first time, thank you for being a part of this. Uh, this is a very special day for us. 58 years and seven days ago, on October 26th, 1955, this boat kissed the water for the first time. In a few moments, she'll be doing that again. In her day, Rosie Parks was the pride of the Skipjack fleet. On that day, October 26, 1955, when she went overboard, she was built side by side with two other sisters, the 
the Martha Lewis and the Lady Katie. She was the first of the three to be completed. She was the first of the three to be launched. And it was in this, this tiny little rural town in lower Dorchester County of Wingate, Mar of Wingate Maryland where Bronzy Parks had his yard. Bronzy Parks was a giant in his community. He was a, a giant physically. He was a man of, of large stature. And he, he bound that community together. He was a founder of the local fire company. He was, uh, he was the largest employer in the area. Virtually every boat builder who learned the trade in Dorchester County at one point or another worked with Bronze of Parks. This was built, these three skipjacks, Rosie being the first of them, was toward the end of his, his career in which he built nearly 400 boats. His boats were not, were reputable not only because they were good boats but because they were beautiful boats. And Rosie Parks today is a testament to, to that workmanship and that aesthetic sense that he brought to, uh, to his craftsmanship. He built this boat, his customer was his own older brother, Orville Parks, and they named her for their mother, Rosie Parks, who died when they were quite young. And so she was a beloved boat for, uh, for the family. When Orville Parks got on, not only was Orville Parks a dynamite oyster dredger, it was easy for him to get crew because they knew they were going to make money with Orville Parks. But when they started the skipjack races at Deal Island in 1960 and, and at Chesapeake Appreciation Days in 1965, she was a winning boat too. She was in fact, in the years under Orville Parks' captaincy, she was the winningest skipjacks in those, in those races. Next year, we hope that she will be back in the mix with the Skipjacks, racing once again. As Tom said, this would not have been possible without a number of, of, of people, uh, people's involvement. I want to I personally thank up here a number of our contributors, Maxine and Bill Millar, Beverly and Richard Tillman, the Richard Grant uh, Family Trust, members of the Parks family who have, who have given financially to this project, and many, many other individual donors like many of you. All of you who have helped to do, to do that, thank you very much. I want to thank our staff, the craftsmen who put all the effort uh, into this, uh, led by a group of apprentices, led by Mark Barto and Mark Donahue. Thank you. You, sh you can be proud of what you've, you've done. And I want to emphasize that this boat, we saw a unique opportunity in the restoration of this boat to do a boat in the manner so that when we were finished, when we are finished with this job, what you will see is not our choices, our workmanship, our craftsmanship, but the signature of Bronzy Parks, that we replaced this timber for timber, plank for plank, following the original, following the original techniques. And this, this is indeed a very faithful, uh, restoration of the Rosie Parks, something that we can now say that we have done honor, I think, to the original builder, Bronze Parks' vision for this boat. And next year, when we get to racing her, we've now got a challenge to honor her owner, Orville Parks, as well. I want to I invite up here member, uh, two representatives of the Parks family, Press Harding, a grandson of Bronzy Parks, and Tom Parks, a grandson of Captain Orville Parks. Are you? They're close by. Please come on up. I think they may have a few words. You said everything was going to say. <laughs> 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 it's a joke. Um, I can tell you as a child growing up in Papa's boatyard that it was a 
an existence that was like really bigger than life. And as a child, you just couldn't imagine doing anything else but being there and being a part of it. I, launches were always a really big thing. People would get dressed up and they'd all stand along the side of the road. But I can tell you, they never had a crowd as big as the crowd we have here today. <laughs> and it's really pretty unbelievable. Um, the Rosie has always been, uh, once she was established with Uncle Orville Salen, or she became like a true landmark of the Bay community. And everywhere you went, everybody knew who Rosie was. But she was also the mother of five sons. And two of them grew up, one became a prominent boat builder, the other was a very prominent and successful waterman and really a tremendous racer. If you didn't think he was a leader, you were never in a boat race with him. <laughs> that's how you knew how graceful the sterns were of Papa's boats, was because that's all you saw of the Rosie at Deal Island. I can tell you that for a fact. I was on the Wilma Lee, so that's, that's what I saw. Um, I'd like to thank the museum for taking on this project because when you saw her bef at the end of her life, basically, um, it was a really insurmountable task almost to rebuild this boat. And I think you can look at her and say they did just an absolutely fantastic job. Um, Rosina was um, Rosina Todd, and she was born in the 1870s and she married Robert Parks. And she died at the age of approximately 25 years old and left behind these five boys. 50 years later, one of her sons, or two of her sons, took on this project of having this boat built and it was named the Rosie Parks. Then another 50 years passed and you, when you saw her just a few years ago, it was obvious that this Rosie was at the end of her life. And the museum, the board, the staff, you know, the shipwrights, everybody, the volunteers. Okay. They really have breathed new life into this boat. And I thank them very much for it. I think it's a really grand thing. Thanks. Here's Tom. I'd also like to uh, add to our family's thanks to the museum board members, the, the staff, the boathouse team, all the volunteers who actively participated in the rebuild, and certainly the many donors who have made this relaunching possible. To my grandfather, Captain Orville Parks, this was his most prized possession. He started dredging when he was 12 years old in 1908. He dredged for 66 years until he was 78, at which point he then sold the boat to the museum. He did not want to sell her to somebody else who would dredge her in the fleet and not maintain her. In those 66 years, he became known as the best sailor on the bay, winning many races off Deals Island, Sandy Point, and he was the first person officially proclaimed an admiral of the Chesapeake Bay by the governor of Maryland back in the 60s. When James Michener wrote Chesapeake, his first book signing was aboard the Rosie Parks at Sandy Point. Also in the 60s, there was a lithograph series that came out of 10 sailing ships of American history. This is one of the 10 right here. I had the opportunity to dredge with him in the winter of 69 and 70. And this was before people came out with GPS and he could go anywhere in the bay and before he would drop a dredge over, he would just look around and he could tell you what the bottom was going to be, whether it was sandy or muddy or rocky, and he would have the appropriate dredges on for us to go out and make our catch. And we, at that point, we were limited to about 150 bushels of oysters a day, and we could typically do that by about 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. He knew how to dredge and he knew where he was headed. The condition you see the boat in today is how he kept her, even as a working boat. During the summers, he would keep her in the yacht basin in Cambridge, and he would be down there every day, touching up the varnish or the paint, because this was his pride and joy. Once again, I'd like to thank the museum, and we're all looking forward to next year when we can hopefully get her back out, 
take her down to the races and show the rest of the fleet what she can do again. Thank you all. So I get to do the blessing, which is a little different from the christening, but I will tell you that I probably can't get all the water to the boat, so you'll get a little wet. <laughs> it's holy water right out of the Miles River. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the gift of water. Over it, your spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, each of us is given new life. On it, we are given the bounty of your sustenance and recreation. As we gather this day, we give thanks for all the many people who have been involved in the restoration of the Rosie Parks. We call your blessing upon this skipjack, Rosie Parks, and we ask your divine providence to be on all those who sail on her, and that you always bring all the crew and guests and others safely back to port. All this we ask in the name of the one God in whom we live and move and have our very being. Amen. Amen. I just want to say uh, thanks to my crew, everybody in the boat shop, all the volunteers, uh, my family, and especially my wife, Alicia.
just a closer walk with me. When it Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er to thy kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let Just a closer walk with thee. Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it Walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord.